importantly. So the APOEE is a genotype that's associated with higher risk for cardiovascular disease in certain forms. You get one of these from your mother and one from your father, and the three different forms, they're called isoforms, are two, three, and four. Two is more dangerous and four is more dangerous. You have three, three, so this is the normal variant, and this is associated with the lowest risk mm -hmm. of cardiovascular disease. These are both related to risk for clots in the legs and lungs, and they're fine, as well as these. Actually, these here are platelet genetics. So these here are, if you were taking a medication called Plavix, then this would tell us whether you needed more or less of that medication. But at this point, you're not taking it, so you don't have to worry about that. These are the ones that uh, indicate whether you have a higher risk for um, a clot in either vein or lung from genetic variations in these uh, molecules, and you're fine. This one here uh, for you is not important. If your homocysteine was elevated, then the reason could be that this is uh, one of the less frequent uh, genotypes. It's uh, only present in 7 to 12 percent of the population. And sometimes with this genotype, it leads to an elevation in homocysteine, which could be a potential risk factor. But your homocysteine is fine. So in your case, this is not an issue. Um, your A1C tells you whether or not you're at higher risk for diabetes. It's an indication of the average blood sugar over the last three months. And for this number five, the average blood sugar is 96.8, which is perfect. So you have no indication of higher risk for diabetes. Your insulin level was only a little high because you were non-fasting. So in a non-fasting situation, this would be considered normal. In a fasting situation, it should be between three and nine. But uh, for you, that's okay. Uh, and we were really concerned if this were high, we would only be concerned if this A1C was abnormal, and your A1C is fine. Your vitamin D level was perfect. And this basically is telling us that you are a hyper absorber of cholesterol. The average person, when they eat a meal, let's say some eggs with lots of cholesterol, they absorb through the intestine into their body about half the cholesterol. The rest just goes on through. If you're a hyper absorber, which you are, that means you're going to absorb maybe 80 or 90 percent of the cholesterol. So that can make it uh, easier for you to have a high cholesterol level. But in your case, it doesn't seem to be a problem because uh, your total cholesterol is fine, your cholesterol numbers are good. So even though you tend to absorb a lot of cholesterol, uh, it's not affecting your numbers. And this tells us whether your liver is making too much cholesterol, and this uh, suggests that your liver is making just the right amount. It's not too much. So that all looks good. And this is the omega-3 index. So omega-3 are the fatty acids that are anti-inflammatory, as opposed to the omega-6, which are inflammatory. And the American diet is too much omega-6, not enough omega-3. So this looks at how much omega-3s you're taking in in your diet. And uh, this actually looks at how many of them are in your red blood cell membrane. That's what the RBC stands for. And EPA and DHA are the two protective omega-3 fatty acids. So 7.2 is quite good. Optimal is considered over 8. Uh, and then high risk is less than 4%. So in your case, 7.2% of the fatty acids in your, uh, in your uh, red blood cell membranes are EPA and DHA, and that's pretty close to optimal. You could probably maybe have a little more uh, fish or fish oil in the diet, but it's pretty close to optimal, so you mm -hmm. don't really have to worry about it too much. And that's it, basically. So overall, that's a good report. Yes. Yeah, that's, that's a good report.